We begin, as always, with three things investors ought to be thinking about right now. Hiring slowed in June, but wages rose, leading investors to sell stocks on concern the Fed will continue to hike interest rates. With earnings seasons right around the corner, we've got three sectors to keep an eye on. Then the Zuckerberg versus Musk battle continues. Meta's Twitter killer app Threads making its big debut. Can the new platform dethrone Twitter? On the Barron's Roundtable, my colleagues Kristen Bellstrom, Carlton English and Jacob Sonnenschein. So, Carlton, for a while there, I was thinking we had actually returned to an era where good news was good news. But it was not to be. We had that really strong ADP report on Thursday, the market tanks. On Friday, the non-farm payroll number, not quite as strong, but still enough to convince investors Fed's going to keep hiking. Stocks did not have a good week. And that's exactly it. Uh, Wednesday, we saw uh, ADP say nearly 500,000 jobs were added to the economy. Um, that, you know, definitely uh, led to some fears that not only is the Fed going to hike in July, that's almost certain at this point. Also, the likelihood of a Fed hike in September, potentially afterwards, is increasing. Now, on Friday, we had a more middling report from uh, the Labor Department that showed a little more than 200,000 jobs added to the economy. And that came in below most estimates out there, just slightly below. But we see things like, you know, wage wage increases. Look, we all love it. We all love having more money in our pockets, but that is inflationary. Um, wage growth, not as high as it was this time last year, but still looking pretty high. So again, signs that the Fed still has its work ahead of it. Switching over to the bond market, that was interesting. So on the short end, you saw the two-year jump above five. It did come back, but the 10-year above four, that seems like a more durable move. That could be a signal that the economy will be strong. What do you think? And that definitely seems to be it. I think all of the jitters right now are just that near term. What is the Fed going to be doing? And that's what we're seeing on the moves that we saw in the two year. To your point, yields did come down a little bit after we got Friday's print. But, you know, more durable looking out, it's OK, maybe there's a little bit more uh, durability in the economy when we look a few more years out on the curve. Uh, in the coming week, of course, we've got the CPI report. Suddenly that's even more important, huh? Absolutely. I mean, the Fed is looking at every bit of data to try to figure out what they're going to do with rates at the end of this month. I mean, most likely, again, it is going to be a hike. Um, CPI is expected to be a 3.1 percent gain in prices. Now, again, much lower than it was this time last year, but we are still you know, well above historic levels. And the Fed not only wants to get to its 2 percent target and have it kind of stay there. I mean, they need to have faith that it's going to stay there. So moving in the right direction, just not fast enough. And they want to convince the markets that they will do whatever it takes. Uh, so, Jacob, uh, Carl was talking about a durable recovery. That could bode well for some of the less sexy sectors. You've been taking a look at them. What is it? Energy, materials, and? Uh, and banks. And banks, yes. Let's start with uh, materials. Dr. Copper is often a predictor of, of a better economy. When I look at materials, and especially Freeport MacMoran, they're coming off their low a little bit. So it's not, you know, it, it's tough to time the market. But when I look at Freeport, other materials as well, they're, they're still trading at a PE multiple that isn't too rich. Freeport is comfortably below the S&P 500s 19 times. A lot of times when Freeport or copper miners are in favor with investors, uh, they can actually trade in line with the S&P. They can actually sometimes trade a little bit higher than the S&P. What's going to actually get them going, and especially as you, as you look at the earnings reports coming in, the price of copper could continue to move higher as central banks, especially the Fed, stops hiking rates. Like Carlton was saying, the economy stabilizes. That's good for copper demand. It's good for the price of copper. Long term, you have electric vehicle demand uh, as well. But you have a lot of tailwinds, and some of those tailwinds could start to show up in management commentary looking forward. Um, so something like a Freeport Mac might have a lot more room to run. And then in energy, you have a similar situation with Chevron. And then in, in banks, you have a similar situation with Citigroup. And Chevron is pretty much closely tied to the price of oil, right? Yep. 100 percent. And it's very cheap. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, Kristen, let's talk about the fun stuff, threads, Zuckerberg <laughs> versus Musk. So um, a lot of missteps by Elon Musk on Twitter. I'm not sure threads was ready for prime time yet, but I think Facebook or Meta just said we got to launch now. Yeah, well, I mean, Zuckerberg certainly came out swinging with this launch. Uh, they, it was actually, Threads was downloaded in the first 24 hours by 30 million people. That's a record. Uh, it's up to about 70 million now. And, you know, 
Musk is not like this. He's actually accused uh, Meta of stealing trade secrets. This is something Meta definitely has denied, but the back and forth is on. Well, no question about it. When you look at threads, we should explain for those who haven't seen it, it looks an awful lot like Twitter. It's yeah. a similar app. It acts a little bit differently, but visually it's very similar. No, absolutely. It's a Twitter clone, and, and no one is denying that. And, you know, I think Zuckerberg has big aspirations for this. Potentially, he said, if we can get a billion people on this app, we can really monetize this. Now, that would be almost three times as many people as are on Twitter. So I think the bar there is extremely high. Right now, it's very basic. There are no ads. You can't search. You know, this is an app that still needs a lot of development. So they've got people on there. But the question is, will they stay? Will they get addicted? Yeah, will they become part of the conversation? Yeah, uh, and that's not easy to do. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.